XLR versus USB. Out of the hundreds and hundreds of videos that compare these two kinds of microphones, none of them actually answer the most important question. News from the booth! Hey villagers, welcome back to the VoiceOver Village. I'm Rick McIver, your village idiot and late adopter, apparently. A USB mic plugs directly into your computer. An XLR mic plugs directly into an interface, which then plugs directly into your computer. All the videos that are out there talk about that. However, none of them ask the most important question. Will it blend? No. Can I have cheeseburgers? No. Who shot JR? How old are you? No, no. Think of questions like this. How much do you think it costs to make this little guy? Uh, what are you trying to use it for? And, well, I'll save the third and the most important question for the end of the video. But let's see if we can address those first two questions now. Okay, let's have a really quick short lesson here about how to get audio from your mouth into your computer. You need three things. First thing you need is a microphone element. Now that's this little audio capsule that's in all microphones. That capsule captures sound waves and vibrates and converts it into an electrical signal, a very faint, very weak electrical signal. That weak, tiny signal then goes into what's called a preamp. That preamp amplifies that tiny, small electrical signal. Once that signal is amplified to where you like it, you can then convert it into a digital signal that takes an analog to digital converter. So in a USB microphone, all three of those things happen right here. You have the microphone capsule, you have a preamp, and you also have an analog to digital converter. That then goes through a USB cable into your computer. Boom, Bob's your uncle. I don't think I have an uncle named Bob. I'd like one though. The same process happens with an XLR system. However, they're just kind of spaced out. This is the microphone. Its job is to capture the audio signals and then convert it into an analog electrical signal. That small electrical signal then gets sent via this XLR cable to your interface. Your interface has a preamp. Those preamp knobs, those gain knobs on the front, that allows you to adjust the level of the signal. Once you've turned it to the place you like it, that box also has an AD converter in it, and that analog to digital converter converts it to ones and zeros, which is sent to your computer. So the USB microphone system that captures audio and sends it to your computer is typically cheaper than a XLR system, which has the microphone, the cable, the interface. USB systems are typically less, which begs the question, how much quality can you actually expect out of a USB mic? Let's break it down. Now, you've probably run across a company called Fifine, Five, Five, Fiend, Fee, Fo, Fo, Fa, Fee, Fine. They have a microphone that they're selling that is a USB condenser mic that they claim is excellent for voiceovers. Any company that sells a microphone is trying to make a profit. So let's just take this $33 microphone and take $13 off the top, and that'll cover profit, that'll cover cost of labor, that'll cover advertising, things like that. Let's just take that right off the top. Now we're left with 20 bucks. Then you have to take that $20 and divide it, I guess, equally among four things, not three. You have, in addition to the microphone capsule and then the uh, preamp, and then you have the AD converters, you have to also think of the physical microphone, the casing, the wire mesh, uh, the stand that it sits on. So we're going to divide it into those four categories and then you get about five bucks each. So that means that you're trying to be a professional voice actor using a $5 microphone capsule, which is why the answer to the first question is so important. How much does it cost? Trying to do voiceover professionally, even as a side gig, with a $33 microphone even though there are some coaches out there on YouTube that say, yeah, you can get started with a $33 microphone, technically, audio goes into your computer. But realistically, are you going to be able to produce high-quality voiceover audio on a $5 mic capsule? I don't think so. Which means that XLR microphones are always superior to USB microphones. Well... Allow me to present the Neewer NW700 piece of crap. This is a medium diaphragm XLR cardioid pattern condenser microphone that sells for $20.
Let's just ignore the fact, just for a second, that this microphone sounds like a porcupine giving birth in my ear canal. And let's just listen to the self noise, just for a second. I'm here in my booth where I do my work. It's quiet in here. What you're hearing is the self noise of the NW700. Piece of crap. There is absolutely no way to use the audio from this microphone for anything, ever, in any situation. Don't. Okay, but what if you... I said no. Okay. Just because a microphone is an XLR microphone does not automatically make it a superior mic. You have to think about, one, how much does it cost? Two, what are you going to use it for? And three, uh, oh, I'll get to the third most important question in just a sec. Stay with me. The more you spend on a USB mic, likely the better quality it will be. There is a law of diminishing returns, but that's another video for another day. You are not going to get good quality audio that you can use for voiceover from a $40 snowball. No. No, you're not. So let me answer that first question. This microphone right here, this is the AT2020. I know, I bought one. Shush. This is an XLR medium diaphragm condenser microphone that cost about a hundred bucks. And many, many, many voice actors use this for a long, long time. It's a workhorse in this industry. There are also a lot of quality interfaces as well, like this one from Focusrite. This is about a hundred bucks. It's the 2i4. You also have one from PreSonus. There's one from Behringer. There's a number of good quality audio interfaces that have good quality preamps and AD converters. So then you're going to need a mic cable for 15 bucks and let's throw in a mic stand for $10. So now you're sitting right at $250. It's a good point of entry for a passable voiceover setup, which means realistically, in order to get high quality voiceover level audio from a USB mic, you're probably going to have to spend somewhere north of $200. But this is where the answer to the second question is really, really important. If you are a streamer, a $100 USB mic is just fine. If you're a gamer, a hundred dollar microphone is going to be fantastic. If you're podcasting, I would probably spend a little bit more on audio quality, but you can get by with a hundred dollar microphone. If you're Yoko Ono, yeah, go ahead and get that cheap microphone. That's probably okay. No one can really tell the difference anyway. Regardless to whether it's a USB setup or an XLR to interface setup, in order to compete as a voice actor, you have to invest in high quality components. Why? Because your competition is voice actors who have high quality audio are more likely to book work on a consistent basis. The truth hurts sometimes. YouTube thinks that you're going to really like this video right up there. And I, for one, am happy to submit to our algorithmic computer overlords. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I appreciate it. I hope it's been helpful. Until next time.